Yes, I'm still in the greenhouse from the last episode. <laughs> oh, really? Um, I'm continuing on sowing. I've got a couple of chilies here. There's the one called Apache, which is quite a common one. And this one here is called Long Slim, which I've never grown before. As usual, I'll be growing these in these Agriland plug plant trainers. I won't be videoing because you've seen it in the last lot. My channel's not one of these where I'm going to video everything just for the sake of putting a video up. I'll video if I think it's of interest. If you did miss the first session of me doing the sign, there should be a little card flying out somewhere up here now. If you click on that, that'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Anyway, I'm going to crack on and when I've finished, I'll bring you up to date with what I've all sown. Just had a look at the thermometer. Can you believe it's minus two? I must be mad. There's only me on the site, no surprise. But I'll do a couple of jobs to keep me warm, and one of them, first of all, I'm going to empty the solariac, what's left out of these beds. There's only these three plants left remaining there, so I can easily whip them out. They'll store okay. This bed here, as you can see with the sprouts, was originally the brassica bed. But next year it's going to be for the alliums. We've already got our garlic in there. That seems to be doing okay. I'll have a tidy up, get the leaves up around the sprouts. And they'll be in here probably another, I don't know, fortnight, three weeks. But in the meantime, I'm going to start moving some of this lovely cow manure onto the beds. I'm not sure if I mentioned in the last video, but... This is the first time I've ever grown celeriac and uh, I must say I was uh, quite happy with what we got. The ones we have had, we've mixed with uh, parsnip, onions, a bit of celery and had a nice stew out of it. So uh, I've already ordered the seeds again for this for next year. And this one, I can't remember the name of it now. It's, uh, I know it's got an X in it. <laughs> I put them in the shed, knock the soil off. They'll keep for a good while. It's amazing how tough are these sprouts on. Fetching these leaves off. Some of them have got pools of water and they're actually chunks of ice still on the leaves. And the leaves look perfect. Let's give that a little bit of a tidy up. All that's left now, I've got some... When I cut the brassicas off, I've left the roots in there. I like to take them out because I don't know harbour any risk of club root or anything. So they'll probably come out very, very quickly. Um, most of it's weeded pretty good, so now I'm just going to start layering some of that stuff on. Certainly don't feel like minus two now. Well, that's that all done and dusted. Don't take too long. Looks nice on there. I think we've we'll got a few more nights of frost and that'll help it break down even more. Once that's turned in, February, March, I think the onions are going to love it in there. Right, see what's next. For anyone starting an allotment from fresh, 
or even if you've got an allotment already and the beds are not producing the crops you'd like them to. It's well worth investing in some of this if you can get hold of it. Now I know we're very, very fortunate in that the farmer is only three or four miles away and uh, this is at least a year old. It's been rotting in his, in his yard so we can more or less use it straight away. When I first took up my plot here, the guy who had it grew nothing but soft fruit and the very narrow beds, there's only like two foot wide. So when I ripped all those out, built the raised beds with the scaffold boards, I double dug all the beds. And if you're not familiar with that, you dig down the spit, which is a spade depth, remove the soil, and then you dig down again, and all that loose soil there are piled in this cow manure and topped the soil back up and did that with all the beds. And that has paid dividends. Not only does it produce good food throughout the year or the years, it also retains a lot of moisture. So if you're on clay soil, this adds a lot of humus and it, it's marvellous it is. So say, in the extremes that we had last year, just by removing the first inch or two of soil, I was down to very, very moist soil and the plants love it. So I'll just give you a little quick update here. This is in my study. I've got the small Vita pod in there. Just pop the lid off. And I've got I've actually got four of the um, Agriland pods in there, but there's one in the bathroom at the moment I've took out because the onions have come up. So in there, in that one, is number one. That's got mammoth onions and calcium. They're just starting to pop up now, they are. So I'll be moving those out quite soon. On this one here, number three, that one has uh, got mammoth onion and also some peppers. And this one on row four, I've only sown two on there. These are at uh, 20 degrees at the moment. So as soon as the onions pop up, I'll move them out. And I'll just pop you into the bathroom on the windowsill where I've actually moved one of the plug trainers into there. Here we are in the bathroom. These are the zebrunchulots. I'll just pop the lid off and show you. Not sure how well this will show up because I'm firing against the light here. But... Uh, so most of these have come up now, got them out in time, and that's a, a fine example there of what they call that the crook stage. The job for today is to have a bit of a tidy up in this greenhouse. What I want to do is actually clean the old bench along here, because I think I mentioned it in the video last time, or the one before, over Christmas I bought another double visor pod, and uh, I'll be getting rid, well not getting rid of, decommissioning this other sandbox I got, the heated box, nothing wrong with it, working perfectly it's just that for me the Vitapods do work better they do warm up quicker but the main thing is once they've served the purpose for the season I can actually just unbolt a few panels and move them into me storage in the loft and that then clears the whole bench up ready for use. So I've got some auto pots here with peppers I never picked. Some, some pepper on there. <laughs> uh, there's another one there. So I'll start clearing this out and uh, we'll bother filming it. See you in a minute. During the clean out, I'll just show you these. These are the Zabroon banana shallots. And uh, so this is the last shoe we've got left. And still quite firm. So they do quite well. All that's been done is putting this blue tray left in the greenhouse. Right, time to get this out. Um, I'll just show you inside. I'll take the lid off. So this is another one what's four foot by two foot. This one's done out. Still got the sand in. The weight of this is amazing. It's, with the sand, it does add an extra lot of weight. And, the, shel the shelves in here are not actually sta freestanding on the floor. They've got like an angled gallows bracket which goes to the frame of the greenhouse. Not the greenhouse is not strong enough. It is you, for the advert of this, them sitting four or five blocks on the roof, but even so. Anyway, I'll just show you what's inside. So this is what it looks like inside. Got a bit of foulage growing in there. So it's... Been, the lid's been on for a month or two, so when I wasn't using it, I did have a little resident mouse that used to borrow inside. Is the, this thing's called a rod thermostat, 
and you need this as near to the surface as possible so that it maintains the heat and tells you what it is for when the pots go on top. There's a little thermostat here which is adjustable and this is just sharp building sand. Again the frames made out of marine plywood this is quite thick, thicker than the other one. I built this one I think it's about four years ago well it was actual replacement when the, the frame had rotted and this is just sharp building sand going down I don't know if you can see how deep it is there's probably see the cable there and this is done in a, a zigzag up and down obviously the closer the cables you are it'll warm up quicker and there's less likely to get any cold spots but um, unfortunately say this is coming out because the the new Vitapod is going to be in its place and I'll show you the one which was over here as well that's outside I'd say I did decommission that last year now this is the first one that I decommissioned last year it's a four foot by two foot and you can see the way the cables laid out so this is it's getting on for 30 years old this is it's done out of marine ply which was quite expensive at the time and uh, what I did, I raised these on battens and just put a metal mesh grid over the top so it was actually warm in the air below the plants and that warmed up quite quickly. And the cable here is one complete loop. Normally now I think they're just one length. So you can see how it's been set out. And uh, that's still working actually. This is, and this thing here is what they call a rod stat where that measures the temperature either in the air or underneath the sand, whatever you've got in there. And uh, that there is the actual thermostat. In fact, this company now has been out of business for a good many years. But so this is still working. I'm not going to throw it away. It's just going to be decommissioned. I think it will be easier for me to try and pull this out to give me a bit of room. But there's a right load of weight in it. So on the bottom of here, there's a a big slab of insulation, polystyrene, it's called uh, Kingspan. Put that in the bottom and then you put the damp proof membrane on the top, put a bed of sand on and then run your cables and then uh, this membrane then keeps it uh, like a watertight really so it very rarely dries out. That's the worst thing you can do with these is let them dry out I think I'm going to have to empty this out in the bucket. The weight in here is amazing. I'm just cleaning out the last bits now. The mouse has done some damage in here. It's bit right, right through the damp proof membrane and actually gone through the polystyrene insulation. I'll just show you. You can see this bit of big hole in there. That's gone down like another inch and a half through the polystyrene. There's another bit in that corner there. So when I knew they've got mouse in, I'd actually put the lid back on. They couldn't get in, but obviously the damage done. It'd be nice and warm in there as well for him. Hard luck, mate. <laughs> well, he did some damage, this mouse did. There's another massive owl here, and he's at all the insulation underneath. So even if I recommission this again in the future, I'm going to have to reline it. So what I'm going to do now is cut the plastic at the bottom and salvage what I can of this insulation because I want to put my Vitapods on the top of there to protect the heat from falling through the slats. see <laughs> he certainly left his mark on there that's useless so that's it all done and dusted the bench is totally clear now ready to receive the vitapods one of them's actually still in the box which I bought at Christmas I haven't unpacked it yet but uh, that's now a problem what I'll do I'll build them both in the house and then bring them in, transport them in, that's no problem. 
I won't be filming it, but uh, if you haven't seen the Vitapod before or have a bit more closer look in detail, I have done a review last year and also did a review of a extra lighting kit you can go, grow lights. So I'll put a couple of cards up the top here. If you click on those, that will give you a better insight into what's involved with them. The other thing I'll put on there is uh, some polystyrene uh, tiles. And all that will do is uh, act as a bit of insulation underneath and stop the heat dissipating through the bench. Saves a bit more energy, that's all. So I'm going to crack on with that. And uh, that's about it for this one. I'll catch you out on the plot in the next one. All the best. Bye for now.